a spiritual awakening is mandatory. Life can be a contradiction. But it doesn't have to be a lie. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Contradiction with myself, Bernard Alvarez, and Roxy Lopez. As you know, we've been doing this series now for several weeks, and we're doing it because we feel there are certain issues uh, within, whether it be your spiritual nature and or the activist nature or the world and geopolitical spectrum as a whole that creates so much contradiction in our lives. Today, we are going to be talking about the corporation nation, where it's headed, how it got to this point, what can we do about it, and what we need to be aware of. Let me bring Roxy Lopez on. And Roxy, let me ask you, it, it's fair to say that we're not necessarily a corporation nation yet, or is, that, or is it already the corporation nation? Oh, I think we are. Um, I think it's pretty obvious. Um, being that the corporations, there's no distinction in um, government and corporations. As we have stated in other series of contradiction, um, the government is beholden, subjugated to the corporate dollar and bought and paid for. Uh, the voice of the people, if you, this is where the separation is. If you don't have the big bucks, you can't buy and pay off a congressman. Um, Jesse Ventura, who's a very well-known ex-governor, uh, stated that when he ran for governor, he did not use lobby or corporate uh, funds, uh, special interest funds, because he didn't want to be owned by the special interest groups. And he made it into governorship in Minnesota. And not only that, he continued to function for four years without those extra dollars, without the money. And he built uh, in a, a railway system, et cetera, claim to fame for him. And he became the most uh, liked, popular governor in the history of the United States of America, I believe. By the time he closed his term, he had 78%. Wow. He just recently said 80 But anyway, that's a high margin for a governor. And part of it was because he listened to the people. And the only reason why he didn't run, he could have run the second four years as governor easily would have won. Uh, but his wife got ill. And wow. he took the priority uh, away from his... Uh, uh, his uh, governorship, if you will, um, his career, and he placed it on his wife. And he's very proud of that. That's a man who has moral standards, moral aptitude, and a clear conscience as well. Uh, he's just written a book, by the way, I just have to say this. Um, they killed our president. He has taken on the stance and written a a uh, very voluminous book regarding the Kennedy assassination. And this is somebody, this is a man who is a Navy ex, you know, ex Navy SEAL, etc., served as a governor in the United States of America, who is a patriot of the United States of, of America and we the people. This is a perfect example. He is a perfect example of somebody who rarely lives in a state of contradiction. He has to do what is right. Can you imagine when he could have run again another four years and really cleaned up a, 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 a lot in the next four years, second term? But he chose his wife and family over that. Yeah. He must have been in a state of contradiction in a little bit because at the same time, he probably thought, but I'm doing so much for the country and for my state. And that's a lot of people that I'm affecting their lives, right? And then here's my one person, my wife. But he clearly, beyond a shadow of a doubt, made it very clear to the American public that his wife was number one. And without his wife, he couldn't live with that decision to have her die without him being there. Right. 100%. So I give him a lot of credit. Okay. And I think he is a perfect example to all of us as far as the corporation nation goes. 
Uh, we are a corporate nation. We are the United States of America Corporation. And what will we do with that? What do we do about that? Well, we come to recognize it. Uh, we do. We educate ourselves again and the people around us and don't live in denial about it. Um, you don't need to. There is too much information available to us now. Uh, the corporation, the United States corporation owns all of the mainstream media. It dictates what propaganda will be on CNN, CNBC, ABC, Fox, ABC. It dictates it. That's why you don't see, for instance, our series contradiction. You'll never see this on mainstream news or mainstream anything mm -hmm. because it's the truth and it's, and it's empowering people. The truth always empowers. So as far as the corporation nation goes, I think we're not just a corporation nation. I think that we're a corporation globe. The oh, whole yeah. world is a corporation. Is it good? Is it bad? You know, that's that just depends on what side of the fence you're on and what, what window you're looking out that day. If you work for a big corporation and you make a good salary, you're going to think it's something good. It translates to that. But you've got to keep in mind that even people who work for these big corporate um, uh, entities, are also starting to lose faith in the corporation as well because it is too controlling and even those who make a good salary at a corporation are now beginning to question the entity the octopus if you will that they are now employed with and what do you do about that what do you think bernard Rob, you made a very good point. Uh, the reality of it is, is that many of us are are, are forced uh, to comply, and you know, many activists, and especially those of us who are visionaries, and try to promote the creation of of the new paradigm or whatnot. The number one thing that most of us will say, and I've been saying it for twenty. 20 years, and I say that with a bit of frustration. I've been saying it for 20 years, it's non-compliance. Don't give in to what the commercials are saying. Don't give in to the fact that we are becoming this uh, this corporation nation and, and, and stop, uh, stop giving them your money. Uh, there is one way to shut down this uh, this dragon, for lack of a better term, and that's to stop funding it. If we can stop giving our money to corporations like Monsanto, Cargill, Dow, Walmart, and all of these others that have these billion dollar pockets that are paying for the senators to, to vote in their favor, they, they will be bled dry. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, we have the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve will print up money and give it to them maybe as a gift like Obama did and Bush did. But we must be very aware that as, as we are giving them our funds, as we are giving them our money, they are growing, they're getting stronger. And it shows them and it gives them the false sense of acceptance and, and promotion. When we see people wearing uh, labels like Chanel or Nike or anything like that, you know, it, it, again, it's it, A, people do it because they want to feel better about themselves, but B, it is promoting your walking advertisement just as, you know, there's that joke about uh, turning congressmen uh, to wear race car driver uniforms with all the logos of the companies that they represent. <clears throat> That's where we are right now. A lot of people don't understand that there is uh, many, uh, many different legislations that come in. And I remember in Occupy, we were very involved in overturning Citizens United. I think we're, we're beyond that now, sadly. Uh, or as for those of you that don't know, Citizens United was uh, was about you know giving funding, corporate funding to uh, candidates, unlimited and and privately. Uh, there, unfortunately, in the early twenties, we created corporate personhood, 
which allowed a corporation to be a person in the United States. They had the rights of a human being. It's funny, and I'm just on a side note, it's funny how just recently Bolivia finally gave Earth personhood. The rights of Mother Earth was passed, and now Earth has the same rights as a human being. They're going in the right direction. The corporation nation does not like this. The corporation nation wants the right to strip mine, clear cut, uh, you know, suck up every water resource, every uh, petroleum resource, every vegetation, life, animal resource, and make a profit off of it. Remember, the corporations are intended to create profit. And they must bring profit to the table to their investors every quarter with their quarterly meetings and whatnot. So to think, and now this is where the contradiction comes in. To think that a corporation with these lovely ads about saving the earth and creating better energy and 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 being there for the people. Oh, Walmart supports the, you know, the, the, the orphanage or whatever. No, 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 no. Let's get real about this. Corporations do nothing, nothing that is not going to increase their profit margin. There is no such thing as a mega corporation with good intentions. They have one intention, and that is profit, and that is to bring profits to their investors. I remember before the BP oil spill, my partner at the time was like, Oh, I love BP because they're beyond petroleum. They're creating green energy. La, 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 BP, uh, alternative energy. And then they have the oil spill. It's just one example. We see it over and over and over again. If you actually pay attention to news, as far as these large corporations are concerned, all they're doing is destroying, killing, sucking up so uh, local economies, destroying lo local communities, and raising their profit margins, giving their, their CEOs greater profit, greater salaries. And let me tell you, that not only includes the corporations like BP and Exxon, that also includes the nonprofit quote unquote corporations, Red Cross, Susan Komen, uh, the United Way, Salvation Army, these are all corporations. They might be nonprofit because they get away with it with a tax write off, but they run themselves like a corporation. They give their CEOs half a million, a million, two million dollars salaries, and nobody gets to help. So the corporation nation not only extends from the public marketplace but to the quote unquote private sector. This is what we need to be aware of. This is what we need to start recognizing the characteristics of organizations, companies, um, and, and everything. I mean, just everything. I, I just don't know what to say. I've only got another minute to talk here, so I'm kind of reeling it in. But the reality of it is that there are certain characteristics. Um, I, I am going to flaunt my own, I'm going to toot my own horn for one second, that the GIC is not for profit. We're a grassroots organization. I, I have no intention of ever having a half a million dollar uh, salary. And if I did, I would donate uh, 400000 of it to somebody else or another organization. But you have to learn the characteristics of organizations. I'm hoping you've learned the characteristics of myself, of Roxy Lopez, of Revolution Radio, which we're a part of. I hope you've seen the characteristics of what real grassroots is. And that's where we're going to take down the corporation nation, is through grassroots. And that's why I'm giving you this example. It is the grassroots. When people stop funding the mega, go back to the small businesses, go back to local businesses, and start supporting grassroots efforts, we will start seeing a decline in the power of the corporation nation. And I'm gonna turn it over to Roxy and see what she says about figuring this all out, because we have a contradiction.
we still I love your ideas. I, I think they're fabulous, and it does. It goes back down to com, you know, comes back in. I should say to communal living, community, um, driving the um, local small businesses in the local communities. Find out what they are and start supporting them. It's an opportunity to, as as what you said, Bernard. It's such an opportunity to give less and less and less to the corporations. Uh, we can do this. Yeah. Um, two things that we need to consider in a wrap on this contradiction of how we are in compliance and feeding the monster, feeding the corporations or the corporate nation. Um, we have to get off of our, um, our addiction. Uh, we are addicted to having this, that, this, that, the iPhones. You know, iPhone 5 was a really good oh, example. I need to upgrade. <laughs> yeah, well, not only that, people got in, in knock-down, drag-out fights. One woman traded, and I can't remember the name of the purse, but it was like a $2,500 purse, gave it to the person in front of her to trade places just oh so she God. could get the iPhone 5. So you see what this does? It's like, I'm not saying having an iPhone 5 is a bad no. thing. I'm saying, do you see what we do? Like, what we've be what we've become, the and the addicts we've become. So, if we have an opportunity, you know, with addiction comes pain, and with addiction comes what? Withdrawal. <laughs> Thank you. And that's all we're doing is we're going through. We withdrawals. gotta go through withdrawal. As a nation, okay, that's all we're doing. We're going, God, I, I wanted to go back to where it was 10 years ago when everything was money, 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 and everything, everything I put my hands on was money, etc. Well, we're not going back. We're going forward now. And what we will create uh, in this forward action and forward movement, forward energy, is not only our own evolution, spare no one's life, spare no one's heart in this, um, and please don't live in a contradiction mm. about it because you don't need to remember life is a contradiction but, but it doesn't have to be a lie we'll see you next week for our last episode of contradiction I love you. Bye -bye.